are uh, like a continuation of the same DNA of the parent plants. And this is an erroneous concept. But it's widely pursued in the realm of GM uh, plants. And the fact of the matter is that with every generation of plants, the influences of the cosmos come to bear on the fertilization and development of the new plant. And so the male and female streams actually divide and they reunite. So what's going on in this phosphorus process is the bridging between the lime and the silica. And a woman by the name of Barbara McClintock won the Nobel Prize in 1987 in genetics for proving that corn mutated with every generation. It rearranged its chromosomes. It actually was quite radical about it. And this hasn't really received much note or funding because of the GM industry or the GMO industry. <coughs> because they want to in entertain this erroneous belief that they can patent a variety of plants. And actually what happens, even with your heirloom varieties, they're not really heirloom. It's more the attitude that's gone into propagating that's heirloom. And it produces very similar results maybe to an heirloom variety. But save your own seed and you won't have to do it too long before you find new varieties. Now, the last of these preparations is the horsetail preparation. And this one holds things back in plants. It's very good for, for actually capturing warmth. It's oftentimes used as a tandem in the frost protection program in Lake Frosts. Uh, and it's a very, very high silica plant. And it will promote very stocky growth, very dense cell structure. and. That's the sort of thing you need when you get hit a real wet patch. You need to dry things out. And you need to get the sunshine to work better. This one improves photosynthesis and it's the perfect solution for those three weeks of rain that you might have or the flooding or any of that sort of lush growth condition, particularly if you've had a long dry spell and then you get heavy rains. And you need to be ready with this one if those conditions occur. So these are like a painter's palette of colors or they're like the different instruments in a band that you can use these very creatively to address any condition that you might encounter in agriculture. And you're doing this as a homeopathic preparation, basically. And so you don't need very much substance. It's the process that you're imparting at those times when you need them. OK, so your lime polarity, if you're going to use these preparations, your lime polarity where you've got lime or gypsum, it might be guano in the Pacific, we think of guano as what's left behind on these Pacific Islands after the carbon and the nitrogen have leached out. And so you have phosphate rocks that are actually fossil bird poo. And uh, it builds up. And this, incidentally, is where you find fluoride toxicity in people's diets. It, these these rock phosphates and guano are very rich in fluoride. So your humic and fulvic acid is also associated with this lime polarity and you would use your BD500, your horn manure, your winter horn clay, and your barrel compound, which I hadn't mentioned yet, but I've had some pictures. And the barrel compound has all of those herbal preparations incorporated into uh, a sort of uh, manure and mineral base. And you would use your biodynamic 502, the arrow, the chamomile 503, and the oak bark 505 in those conditions. 
This is a picture here of vesicular or muscular mycorrhiza in avocados. See how rich the fungal mycelium can get, and it associates itself with those delicate roots that occur on avocados uh, in the leaf mold. So this is a type of mycorrhiza that uh, particularly likes that leaf mold that builds up under avocado trees. And avocados send their skirts down to keep that litter alive so that it doesn't dry out. On your silica polarity, this picture here is passion fruit. I'm not aware of any passion fruit growers in the United States, but it's a big thing in Australia and anywhere in the tropics. I'm sure you could grow passion fruit quite successfully in some parts of California, Arizona, Texas, and Florida. And you can see what a productive vine this is. Really nice fat fruits, and you cut them open and they're really juicy and wonderful. And the biodynamic ones that are grown without fertilizer are just mind-boggling. Uh, you would use on this silica polarity to get these nice shiny skins. See how shiny the skins are on some of these? You would use on the silica polarity such mineral supplements as diatomaceous earth or siliceous rock powders or potassium silicates or even aloe vera. And aloe vera is quite a good uh, uh, my, it's a microbial feed in compost teas. And if you had in a thousand liters, we talk about things in Australian liters, of course. In a thousand liter shuttle, if you put in five liters of aloe vera juice, you would create a very highly fungal brew as a result. And so it's silica that feeds the fungi, it's lime that feeds the bacteria. Uh, fungi have all of these, like, network of hyphae. And so they're little fine filaments. And wherever you see that, that filamentous structure in things, it's a silica gesture. Wherever you see this sort of structure, like you would see in bacteria, then it's a calcium gesture, or it's a lime gesture. And you would use in this situation, particularly, you would emphasize your horn silica, 501, your summer horn clay, your 504, that's the nettle one, the 506, that's the potassium silicate dandelion one, your 507, which is valerian, flowering, and uh, then your 508, which would be your horsetail. Anytime you see the leaf nodes elongate and the leaves sort of broaden out and the plant assumes a very lush gesture, then you would use the 508 to hold it back and make it denser and give it more silica. And that would improve the efficiency of its photosynthesis and then it wouldn't try to get the bigger leaf panel and the weaker leaf panel that's susceptible to insect damage and stuff in order to catch enough sunlight. So it's really nice, I should have mentioned on the passion fruit, it's nice to be in there underneath that canopy in the summer tropical sun picking your fruit. It's really quite a nice crop to grow. Now in terms of general nutrition, and I put this picture of a biodynamic dairy farm, the fellow sitting over here that knows this farmer, uh, and back in 2004 when I first encountered this farmer's operations, before he went biodynamic, uh, he was in real deep trouble. And uh, today he is the smilingest, laughingest, most relaxed dairy farmer I think I know. I know a few more like that. But he's really, he's really having fun uh, with his dairy farm. And he sells raw milk. And yeah, he sells raw milk and sells directly to consumers. And has a herd that's mostly jerseys, as you see in the picture, most of them have their horns into them. And if they had high stress with their horns, then they would be using those horns on the other cows and on people and things like that, and they'd get cut off. But the fact that he's got the cows with the horns is a real good sign that he's 
he's not giving his cows much stress. And he's got milk that is just about the color almost of this Jersey cow's coat. It's, it's yellow. It's really, a, when you drink it, man, it's rich. It's just beautiful milk. So, and he's doing this on a grass bed, a dairy herd. And he, you would, under general nutrition, you would do things like fish emulsions, camp kelps and compost teas, or activated EM brews and fertigations. And if he were to give his pasture a dressing, he'd probably do it with a tractor and a boom spray. So that he would just put out like maybe five or 10 liters of material. That's just a little over two gallons, two and a half gallons uh, per hectare, which is two and a half acres. So it's really only a gallon in a lot more water per acre of material. You're talking about fertilizing with something that's a stimulant rather than a substantial fertilizer hit. And that's where you would put in your biodynamic preparations in that same room spray. So you'd have your barrel compound that would have all of those floral preparations and you'd have your spring to spring horn clay or if you're doing this in the fall, you'd do your fall to fall horn clay. And you could put any other combination of preparations you wanted in there. Okay, now this is a cover crop of a legume. And you can see that it's suffering from a, quite a fair bit of insect, uh, you might say, damage. They're eating it and they're digesting it. And maybe you want that. This is called Lab Lab or Dolichos. And it's an extremely vigorous legume. And if you were going to harvest the beans from the cover crop, then you'd want to correct this condition that you see in the leaf there, of the plant being so easily, so readily digested. That's because it's creating a lush condition. And you want to tighten that up. And particularly, of course, you'd have your 508 and your 505. But you'd also want to see that the leaf gets a bit more of the sulfur side of things. So it gets more of its trace minerals and it's got a better, like denser nutrient picture. You want to see that it gets amino acid nitrogen. So you've got your 503 and you've got your 504. That's the bridge between the lime and silicon. So you might use all of those preparations. This was in a area that uh, there's solid set irrigation, so you just put that in your irrigation water. There's a fertigation tank on most irrigation rigs, and you just it just uh, venturis this into the irrigation stream, and you put out, like I say, maybe 10 liters per hectare with your biodynamic preparations in it. Now this is avocados. Uh, there are lots of avocados grown in the United States, but it's more of a Mexican plant because that's where it evolved was in the Mexican rainforest. This is a variety called a Haas avocado, which is the one that's grown in California predominantly. And, uh, and what's grown in Florida is a different type. But you want to promote more fruiting, better fruit, larger fruit, and fruit that matures nicely. And you would spray with your 504 again, that's got all of those, of that lime and silica connection. And your 506, which really sets up that condition of potassium and silica that leads to the filling out of a nice firm, of like big size, it sizes your fruit so that you get a good, well-formed fruit that fills out nicely. And then your 